What is the derivative of e to the x? This is a question that nearly everyone who has taken calculus has been asked, and are normally always accompanied with the answer, e to the x. But have you ever wondered why this fact is true? Why e to the x is its own derivative? I sure have. And so in this video, I'll probably be going through an unnecessary amount of work to prove this fact in a total of four lemmas. But first, let's start with some definitions. First off, we have the exponential function, which by definition is its own derivative, and the exponential function of 0 is equal to 1. And so from this, we get the Taylor series expansion of exponential of x. It equals 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 factorial, and so on. Or written in simulation notation, the exponential of x is equal to the sum of x to the n divided by n factorial from n equals 0 to infinity. And so for the second definition, we will define e as the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 divided by n to the power of n. Okay, enough about definitions, let's get straight to the proof. So for our first lemma, we will prove that exponential of x has an inverse. Now to say that a function has an inverse is to say that the function passes the horizontal line test. Meaning if you draw a horizontal line anywhere on the plot of the function you are testing, it should only pass through one point. Now one way to test this is to see if the function in question is strictly increasing or decreasing. Written down for exponential of x is the derivative of exponential of x is always greater than or equal to 0 or is lesser than or equal to 0 if exponential of x is always decreasing. But because of our definition of exponential of x, this instead can be written as the exponential of x is always greater than 0 or is always less than 0. But which one is it? Well, plugging in 1 for exponential of x, we are always just adding terms and never taking any away from our Taylor series, and so the result should be positive. So if the exponential of x has an inverse, then the exponential of x will always be greater than or equal to 0 for all x. But is this true? Are there any values of x where exponential of x is less than 0? To know why this cannot be true, let's zoom on to the point where the function supposedly switches from being positive to being negative. Since the slope of this function is equal to the output of the function itself, the point at where the function flips must be 0, and therefore the slope at that point must be 0. And when it switches to negative numbers, the slope must also be negative. But that means that the line points down. But then that means that the function around that point is still not negative, and so exponential of x cannot be negative, and therefore has an inverse. And we will call this inverse natural log of x. And now on to lemma number two. For this lemma, I will prove that the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to one divided by x by implicit differentiation. This is an incredibly simple proof, so I won't talk you all the way through it, but I will still leave the proof on the screen. If you think you can prove it before me, please feel free to pause the video and try it out for yourself. And done. After all of that, I will add one simple modification. The derivative of the natural log of x equaling x is the exact same statement as the integral of 1 divided by t dt from 1 to x is equal to natural log of x. You can also check why this is true yourself. And so with that last fact, we can now move on to our third lemma. And that is to prove that the natural log of x times y is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. To use the last fact, we can show that the natural log of x times y is equal to the integral of 1 divided by t dt from 1 to x times y, just swapping the x with the xy, which can be written as the integral of 1 divided by t dt from 1 to x plus the integral of 1 divided by t dt from x to xy. Because if this was a graph of 1 divided by t, the bounds would be connected and it would be the exact same integral. And so with that, we can now start to do some u substitution on the second integral, letting u equal to t divided by x and du equal t dt divided by x. And so our integral ends up being the integral of 1 divided by u du from 1 to y. And so this actually be, ends up being the natural log of y, since we end up just plugging in for y anyway. And so it turns out that the natural log of x times y is indeed equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of y, and thus concludes our third lemma. 
Now I proved the fourth lemma in a previous video, and you can find that video in the card, but since I assumed that e to the x was its own derivative, and that natural log of x was a logarithmic function, I will reprove it in this lemma. Now remember that we proved that the natural log of x is equal to the integral of 1 divided by t dt from 1 to x. Now also remember that an integral can be visualized as the area under the curve y equals 1 divided by t from t equals 1 to t equals x. Now if we replace all the x's in the equation with 1 plus 1 divided by n, then we get that the natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n is equal to the area under this curve from 1 to 1 plus 1 divided by n. And now we can start making some observations. This rectangle right here is clearly greater than the natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n, and is equal to 1 times 1 divided by n. And this rectangle is similarly lesser than natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n, and is equal to 1 divided by n times 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by n. And so now we can multiply all sides of this inequality by n to get 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by n is less than n times natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n is less than 1. Now put a pin in this inequality, we will take a quick diversion to figure out what this n times natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n is equal to. Looking back at our third lemma, we can turn this fact into a fact about the exponential function. If we replace the x and y with exponential of x and exponential of y, we get the equation the natural log of exponential of x times exponential of y is equal to the natural log of exponential of x plus the natural log of the exponential of y. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? Now this right hand side is just x plus y. And so if we take the exponential function on both sides, we get the exponential of x times the exponential of y is equal to the exponential of x plus y now if y was equal to x in this equation, this equation turns into the exponential of x squared equals the exponential of 2 times x. And notice this will work for any multiple of x. And so we get the equation exponential of x to the power of n is equal to exponential of n times x. Now we can turn this back into a fact about the natural log of x. If we replace the x with natural log of x in our equation, we get yet another equation. Man, quite a lot of equations today. x to the power of n is equal to the exponential function of n times the natural log of x. Then do the natural log of x on both sides to get n times natural log of x is equal to natural log of x to the power of n. Now if you remember our inequality, it contained a n times the natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n in it. So we can rewrite this inequality as 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by n is less than the natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by n to the power of n. And now the second term is starting to look very similar to our definition of e. All that is missing is the limit as n approaches infinity. So let's do just that. Doing this, we get 1 is less than the natural log of e, which is less than 1. Now we can use the squeeze theorem, which says that the natural log of e is equal to 1. Now this, in turn, also means that the exponential 1 is equal to e. And now that was our final lemma. You can almost taste the proof, it's so close. Now I present the proof. Remember one of our equations about the exponential function? You might not because we have derived like a billion in this video, but here it is. The exponential of n times x is equal to the exponential of x to the power of n. If we set x equal to 1, then we get exponential of n is equal to exponential of 1 to the power of n. And since exponential of 1 is equal to e, we get the equation exponential of n is equal to e to the n. And since the exponential function is its own derivative, then e to the x is its own derivative. And thus concludes our proof. To the few of you who have seen other proofs of this fact, the proof you've seen was probably four times shorter than this one, but I personally like this proof much better than those proofs. If you think the same, please let me know in the comment section. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you enjoyed this content.